In this video, I'd like to explore which method is best for newborn hearing screening. According to the Joint Committee on Infant Hearing, there are three approved newborn hearing screening methods. The first is autoacoustic emissions, the second is automated ABR, and the third is a two-step autoacoustic emissions and automated ABR approach. We can see that different countries around the world have different preferences for which method they choose. In Europe, we see a predominantly OAE focus, whereas in the Americas and Australasia, we see a predominantly automated ABR or a two-step automated ABR and OAE approach. Regardless of which method is chosen, there has been a body of research which demonstrates that each method has a high level of sensitivity and specificity at diagnosing hearing loss in newborns. Therefore, if we want to try and find the best of these three methods, we need to look at other factors. One such factor, which is recommended by the Joint Committee on Infant Hearing, is that a good newborn hearing screening program should have referral rates less than 4%. Therefore, we can have a look at the referral rates associated with each of these methods in order to give us greater insights into how these perform in the real world. Before I do that, I want to just tackle one question that gets asked commonly, which is, which method is best for newborn hearing screening, transient evoked autoacoustic emissions or distortion product autoacoustic emissions? The images below show the frequency range where the OAE is optimum for both transient evoked autoacoustic emissions and distortion product autoacoustic emissions. We can see that transient evoked autoacoustic emissions perform better in the low frequencies, whereas distortion product autoacoustic emissions perform better in the higher frequencies. When it comes to newborn hearing screening, however, the frequencies that we test are typically between 1 and 5 kHz. Therefore, we can see that both of these methods are robust in measuring this frequency range, and therefore both methods are acceptable for newborn hearing screening. An interesting study from 2014 showed that screening at higher frequencies such as 2 to 4 kHz or 2 to 5 kHz resulted in lower referral rates than screening at frequencies 1 to 4 kHz. Despite this, both the transient evoked autoacoustic emission and distortion product autoacoustic emission can measure these frequencies and therefore both remain valid methods for newborn hearing screening with one not outperforming the other. Let's now go back to the point I made about referral rates. Here we can see the referral rates associated with different screening methods. Autoacoustic emission only screening, in most countries that's typically a two-step OAE process. And we can see that the referral rates at the end are typically between 2% and 8% according to the literature. Screening ABR has an improved performance over the two-step OAE. We can see that screening ABR typically has referral rates of 0.5% to 3%. We can then lastly look at a two-step automated ABR and OAE method. Here, babies are typically screened using autoacoustic emissions first, then autoacoustic emissions second, and then if they continue to fail or refer, then they are then screened with automated ABR. We can see referral rates in this pathway are typically between 0.5% and 2%. Lastly, we need to, of course, take into consideration babies with risk factors. And there's two approaches we can do with screening here, either a single approach screening ABR or automated ABR, or a combined autoacoustic emission and screening automated ABR. Regardless of which method is used, we typically see referral rates between 5 to 10% into diagnostic audiology. If we dig a little deeper, we can see that really the referral rates into diagnostic audiology are not just method dependent, but also dependent on the number of steps within each method. A study by McKay in 2021 looked at screening programs across 47 regions and identified referral, follow-up and detection rates from newborn hearing screening. On the right-hand side, you can see a graph that summarises some of that data. I've picked out a few countries just to provide examples 
of what referral rates can look like when combined with number of steps. If we take the Russian approach, this consists of a one screening appointment, where OAE is performed only, and this results in a referral rate of 1.8%. It's important to note that in the Russia approach, multiple autoacoustic emissions can be taken within the same maternity ward before discharge. The Belgium approach uses a two-step automated ABR test, and we can see that when we add a second layer, the referral rate to diagnostics reduces for the Belgian babies at 1.4%. Lastly, we can add multiple layers to the newborn hearing screening program, and in the Stockholm region of Sweden, they perform autoacoustic emissions, followed by autoacoustic emissions, followed by autoacoustic emissions again, and then lastly, an automated ABR. This robust approach to newborn hearing screening results in very few babies being referred to diagnostic audiology at 0.3%. So we can see that screening method and number of steps has a significant impact on the referral rate into diagnostic audiology. Another consideration we need to make when deciding which screening method is best is to think about conditions which are more complex. An important condition which has been noted recently is of course auditory neuropathy spectrum disorder. If we look at our different methods, then if we use an OAE only approach, then in these babies they can often have present autoacoustic emissions, therefore these can be potentially missed in the well baby screening pathways. Remember, babies with risk factors always need to have screening ABR, and these are the bigger risk for auditory neuropathy spectrum disorder. If we take a screening ABR approach in healthy babies, this then is the best approach for diagnosing auditory neuropathy spectrum disorder, as we would expect the babies to fail on this test. Lastly, we have a two-step OAE, OAE and automated ABR approach. Again, in the well baby population, this can miss many babies because many of the babies with auditory neuropathy spectrum disorder would have passed out of the newborn hearing screening program during the autoacoustic emission stage. The last consideration I want to explain a little bit more today is the cost of screening. Cost is important and therefore it does warrant some investigation. If we look at the different models, a study was performed in 2001 which compared the cost and referral rates of three newborn hearing screening protocols. This was a prevailing autoacoustic emissions protocol using a single autoacoustic emission, a single screening ABR using a single automated ABR test, and then a two-step autoacoustic emission followed by a screening ABR or automated ABR if the baby failed or referred on the autoacoustic emission test. If we look at the costs associated with these three methods, then we can see that the single transient evoked autoacoustic emission pathway resulted in a follow-up to diagnostics of 6.5% of babies tested. This showed that although the screening approach was very cheap, because autoacoustic emissions are quicker to perform and have cheaper disposable costs than screening ABR, the follow-up diagnostics, however, were very expensive, as large number of babies were referred into this service. The screening ABR had much lower referral rates at 3.2%. However, the opposite occurred, with screening ABR being in general more expensive to perform than autoacoustic emissions, again because it takes more time and the disposables are more expensive. The compromise between these two is to use a two-step process. Here the authors found that if transient evoked autoacoustic emissions were performed first, followed by screening auditory brainstem response for those which failed or referred, then the referral rate was 4.7%. If we look at the screening costs and follow-up diagnostic costs, we can see that these were more balanced between the screening service and the diagnostic service. Therefore, it's really important to consider where the funding is coming from for your country's newborn hearing screening, as this may have an influence on which method is chosen. 
So in summary, screening is a complex topic associated with many factors. Referral rates are related to age, test method, and number of screening steps. And lastly, a single global approach to newborn screening will not work. And therefore the method needs to be chosen by that country, which takes into consideration their healthcare systems.